the look of the show was obviously very important to us and that we wanted it to look as much as possible like a movie. And not just big, but cinematic in a way that those movies that so influenced the Duffers had. It's an eight or nine part movie. <laughs> it's storytelling on a big canvas that doesn't forget humanity. We really liked this guy, Tim Ives, and because he had shot Girls and Mr. Robot. The, the references the Duffers had uh, were right up my alley. We were just geeking out with Tim over these films that he loved just as much as we did, and so then it became about figuring out how to replicate that for a television show. There's a style of, of camera movement. There's a style of lenses. All of these things we researched meticulously and tested. We're basically trying to recreate the feeling that we got when we watched these movies, and we grew up watching a lot of movies from the 80s and the early 90s. I really felt like I could bring something to the show that would help make it actually feel like it was shot back then using some of the styles of lighting that maybe aren't currently in vogue, but certainly uh, were in vogue back then. These directors were able to be very cinematic. E.T., Goonies, Stand By Me, and a lot of the references that you've heard us talk about, they're beautiful, but they're not necessarily current style of lighting. For instance, lighting interiors at night and having blue light come in the windows. Um, that's something that I probably wouldn't do anywhere else but on this show. Some beautiful shots come to mind of the void, especially, as a great scenario for lighting that has a real style to it. The brothers described it to me as being in a region that was neither here nor there, that was devoid of any sort of life that felt like it just didn't, nothing existed there. So I wanted to find a way to light that area in a way that there was no source that you could imagine. We rigged a bunch of space lights, which are kind of like white, big white china balls in the, in the ceiling and had made a very special 60 by 100 foot grid cloth that we put underneath it to really soften it. And then we, we used black theatrical drapes all the way around this, basically this hockey rink that we, we built with a very small lip and put water in it to get reflections of anybody that was in there. If there's no light, it can be a little more dreary and that's what I wanted it to look like. Is this place. Motivating the light in the tunnels of season two. Took a little bit of figuring out, and then it wound up to be the simplest thing of all. We lit from behind, and the tunnel looks great in the backlight. Uh, the kids have flashlights. I said, if you want to be seen, you have to, when you're looking around, hit anything that's white, and it'll bounce back, and it'll light you. I would say flashlights lit those million-dollar tunnels. <laughs> I've often said that prep is some of my most favorite time on this show, and it started in season one, where I did shot listing with the brothers. We lock ourselves in this room, and we go over the scripts, and sometimes we act out the scenes with a different character, and we work it all out in that room, and we, we draw diagrams, and we figure out camera angles, and not that we necessarily absolutely stick to that, but we have a great basis for starting the show. We like to have a sense of discovery on set where we find shots, and we work with Tim, and we work with Bob. With the Duffers, we call it a no fear zone, you can say anything to them. You know, you can say, hey, what about this? And they're always open to listening to that. Best idea always wins. We allow for spontaneity to exist in this show, which I think gives it a little bit of spark. It's not very often that camera operators have that kind of involvement, so I just, I love it. Bob has incredible stories. I mean, he's worked with Cameron and Tarantino. I mean, he did all the steady cam work in Pulp Fiction. To have a guy like that with that kind of resume and that kind of experience on your set. He's definitely a partner, as is Dan Murphy, uh, my, my gaffer, and Chris Chapman. I mean, the whole list, it all goes down. I love everybody on the show. But Bob, I'm able to just speak in broad terms with him now. We have a language that we both understand. Sometimes, especially on set, you're tired, you're overwhelmed. And when you have people like Tim and Bob there, they can really figure the scenes out. Fans of the show compliment me on how gorgeous the show looks. And I always tell, no matter who they are, that um, you know it really takes a huge village here. And it, and it looks good because people have presented me with great things to shoot. So you combine all those things and you come into work in the morning. And every single day is a joy because we get stuff that we look at. We look at each other like, that was cool. <laughs>